Ready to Start in Trinity's Electric Grade 1 Syllabus is a nice little piece. Um, of course, being Grade 1, you're mainly focusing on chords or very simple uh, one-note line melodies. Just to quickly look then at the intro. So, just change these sounds slightly. Um, you're going to start off just, I mean, to be honest, you could alternate with your plectrum for this. Um, but if you did it all downstroke, um, you're not going to be penalised for that. I certainly don't think you will be. Um, because it is indie, it's quite heavy, so it's like... Only mezzo forte, but it's how you deliver it when you're playing with the backing track. Need to get this guitar set up. Um, so either way is fine. What I would say is that when you do those last two notes, um, do play in first position, follow that, so you're going to use for the B, which is uh, second fret of the A string, use your middle finger, third fret, you're going to use your third finger, so stay in first position, and then when you do the open D and the E, don't take this second finger off, just fall straight into your C shape. Um, now the rhythm for those chords is basically jingle bells, so it's jingle bells, jingle bells, down, up, down, 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 down, up, down. And even when you do the pre-chorus, you're still doing the same rhythm. In fact, that, in fact, that's basically the rhythm for the whole song, isn't it? Apart from that chorus section uh, where it changes to semi breves and then back into uh, crotchets. But then the, the, the whole last section is back to the same rhythm. So let's just quickly then talk about how you can possibly uh, manoeuvre between the chords. So really, I think there's two ways that you should do this, two logical ways you could approach it. The first would be to use C, standard fingering, obviously, third, second and first. And then when you move to G, move, it's like, you're, it's like you're expanding that C shape outwards. So the second and the third fingers go to the, uh, the bottom two strings, the low E and the uh, low A. And then you put your pinky down on the top string on the third fret to get that G. Okay, and then, so when you transition, you're doing this to this. And then when you pivot into E minor, you leave that middle finger down and just bring the third finger around. And then you would drop those across to the middle two strings to fall into your A minor shape. Now that would be one way. The other way would be if you don't like using your pinky finger, you do standard C and then play your G using middle, first and third and then fall into the E minor by pivoting on the first finger and using the second finger. And then when you pivot into the A minor, you use the pivot finger, keep that middle finger down and then bring the other two fingers across. And then obviously when you go back to the C, keep them down. What a lot of beginners do is they'll play one chord and then they'll take all the fingers off all the fingers off, all the fingers off. But if you have notes that are the same in both chords and there is the possibility of keeping a finger down, think about where you're coming from. Don't just think about the chord you're playing. Where was I? What's the chord? What's the next chord? And what's the most ergonomic, most efficient way for my muscles to move or my fingers to move between those? Okay, so that I think you'll be fine with. You can look at that. Uh, don't forget your repeat markings. Repeat markings, we've discussed this in all the other videos. But the repeat markings, just in case it's the first one you're watching, repeat markings are indicated by two dots at the beginning and the end of a phrase. Or, if you're just repeating the first line, they'll just be at the end of the phrase because you're repeating from the beginning. But in this case, the verse, you're going to repeat line two, okay? Um, uh, just don't forget that. Uh, when you are going into the chorus... Um, there's a good section here where you want to really utilize your dynamics. Uh, up until that point, up until the chorus, it's been mezzo forte, so you'll see the letters MF underneath the first bar of the piece. Um, and they'll be bold and italic, okay, and that is a musical marking indicating a dynamic, okay? So MF, like this, will mean mezzo forte moderately loud. Now, when you go into the chorus, you'll notice the whole track kind of chills out a bit. You need to go down to mezzo piano for that second line on page 27 of your book, so second, second line of the second page of this piece. But when you go to the third line, when you're suddenly doing this crotchet D, okay, you're doing, literally strumming on the crotchet beat, 
a D major chord four times. Underneath it, there is a crescendo marking. Okay, so this crescendo marking means you're going to get louder from whatever your dynamic was, which was MP, up to your new dynamic marking, which is forte. So make the most of that crescendo and get up to forte for the end. And then the last four strums in this piece, I'm just going to write the full rhythm of the last bar out, actually. So you get uh, two quavers, two uh, eighth notes, followed by a quad note crotchet, followed by four quavers, four eighth notes. So this would be coffee, tea, coffee, coffee. But those last four, you I would say do all downstrokes because they're accented. Just really dig in for that end part there. Uh, I'll just play that bar just quickly, just so it's obvious. I don't really need to play it. I'm sure you can all play this already. But you want to be down, up, down, 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 down. Okay, and just give it a bit of welly. Everything else in this piece, I think you'll be absolutely fine with. So let's do the playthrough. Oh 